All right, we're here doing lesson 6.2 out of Sean Taylor's extended calculus for our BC course. And here we'll be dealing with inverse trig functions. So definitions. If we have y equals arc sine of x, you also might see y equals the inverse sine of x too. That's the same thing. Uh, with this, we have sine of y is equal to x. And so we just switch x and y, solve for y. That's what we're doing. Now, when we look at a graph of the sine of x, the sine of x looks like this from 0 to 2 pi. And then if I go backwards a little bit, it looks like that. Not beautiful, but okay. So when I want to take an inverse of this function, I need a strictly increasing or strictly decreasing function. So what somebody decided to do was to take it in and around the origin, and those values right there would create a piece that was strictly increasing. So when I switch x and y, I'm going to get a graph of the inverse sine that would be a function. And so down here, I can get my inverse sine function that looks like that. So if I take this thing right here and flip it over y equal to x, I'm going to get this graph here. We can do similar type things with the cosine and the arctan. So when I switch x's and y's around, for instance, the inverse sine, my domain is going to become negative 1 to 1 because that was the range on the sine function. Then since I need a strictly increasing function or a strictly decreasing function, I need to put it on negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So these are endpoints down here on this graph. Inverse cosine, similar manner, except for we're going to range it from 0 to pi because that would give us all the values we want. So if I have the cosine here, if I go from 0 to pi, that's strictly decreasing. So when I take my inverse, I do get this graph down here. And then the inverse tangent, if I do from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, I'm going to get this thing here. When I flip that over, yes, this thing is going to have a little bit different domain than the other two because it takes on all values. But then the range is going to be limited such that I don't ever hit negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So those are the inverse functions. Those are their graphs. How do we use them? Well, from the domains above, we can use this picture right here in order to help us figure out which values we're actually talking about because we only want one value, it's going to be a function. So let's do some examples here that maybe you are familiar with. Arctangent of 1 would give me a value right about here. And that would be when we have pi over 4. And so we're going to be spitting out something that's going to be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for the inverse tangent. And then here's one, inverse cosine of negative 1. Well, what cosine value do I have when I'm negative 1? It's right there. That angle measurement is going to be pi for us. Now, whenever you see a negative number for inverse sine or inverse tangent, you're going to get a negative angle measurement. So the y value being negative pi over 3, um, well, it will be negative pi over 3, but if it's negative square root of 3 over 2, the y value for this triangle right here would be negative square root of 3 over 2. That happens at negative pi over 3. And then the arc sine of 2. This is asking, when is the sine 2? Well, if you know, it never is. So we get does not exist because our domain is negative 1 to 1. Let's try example 3 here. Solve for x. I have the arc sine. Well, arc sine and sine are inverse functions. If we take inverse functions and apply them to each other, the same composition, what I can do is get rid of that arc sine. So I'm going to take the sine of both sides, and that will get rid of my arc sine for me. So I get x squared minus 3 is equal to the sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So x squared is equal to 4. So x is plus or minus 2. Example number 4. For these problems, we had these in pre-calculus. Uh, this just says find the tangent of x. Well, what's x? x is the arc cosine of 2 over the square root of 5. 
This is how we saw them in pre-calc, but you might see them like this in this homework. Same, same. So what we did was we built a right triangle. We used the inside information to build the right triangle. And usually we orientated it like this, and then we called this my angle measurement X. And then I could build this information with the inverse cosine. Cosine, you know, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I take the two, which is my adjacent, and I put it over my hypotenuse, which is square root of five. So I built the triangle with that information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside information and read off of the triangle. Well, tangent, we know, is opposite over adjacent. And so I don't have the opposite, but if I find this value, 2 squared plus what would give me square root of 5? So it's y squared plus 2 squared is equal to 5. y squared is equal to 1. So y has to be plus or minus 1. Usually we're just going to talk about geometry, so it's plus 1. And so this value is going to be 1. So if I read off the outside information, it's going to be opposite over adjacent. And so then my angle measurement for the tangent of x is going to be 1 over 2. So that's my value. Try number 5 and see if you can do that one yourself. Thanks for pausing it and trying this. So I'm going to build my information with the inside. So the sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, that's x over 1 that I'm seeing there. So I put x over 1 for the opposite over hypotenuse. Find the missing side. Well, you're going to subtract from the hypotenuse, so it's going to be 1 squared minus x squared for the missing side. Now I'm going to go to the cosine and read off the triangle the information I do need to know. This is my adjacent. This is my hypotenuse. So this thing overall is going to be equal to 1 minus x squared, the square root of that, all over 1, which is simply that right there. All right? So now let's go to number 6 and show how we can find the derivative of the arc sine. For this, we want to do this implicitly. So I'm going to let y equal the arc sine of x which means that x is equal to the sine of y. That's just applying the inverse function. Now I'm going to differentiate. When I do this, I'm going to get 1 is equal to derivative sine is cosine of y. Please do not forget to chain this off so we get dy dx. If I solve for dy dx, dy dx is equal to 1 over the cosine of y. Now, look at what we had up here, though. What is the cosine of y? Well, it's the same thing as what we had up here. It's the 1 minus x squared. So if I rewrite this y with what I had over here in the arc sign, this is just building my triangle. So it's the exact problem I have up there. Well, what is that value? Well, that tells me that dy dx is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That's how we just proved the derivative of the inverse function for the sine of x. You can similarly do the other functions, but we're just going to go ahead and give them to you. And here they are. If you look at the arc sine, that's the one we just did. Arc cosine is just going to be the opposite sine from the arc sine. And then the derivative of the arc tangent is a little bit different, 1 plus 1 over x squared. Now, if you do it in terms of u, chain off whatever u prime is in the numerators. So all three of these are what we actually get when we have a composition of functions. So let's try one and see what happens. Number 7. So we're looking at this one right here, arc tan. We're finding the derivative. So when I do this, this is going to be g prime of y. The object of my tangent is this x, and really I'm going to be using this one over here with u. So you just take and put 1 over 1 plus whatever my u is, 2y minus 1. That's the object of my arctan, and then I don't forget to chain off. 
Oh, I forgot a squared there. And so then we go 2 all over 1 plus 2y minus 1 quantity squared. That's it. Now, do you have to memorize these formulas? Absolutely. You have to know them. Once you get them a little bit, though, then they're not so bad. Number 8. f of x equals the arc sine of square root of x. So we're going to go up to this one right here. And so f prime of x is equal to, and I'm just going to take my u prime. You can do it this way, too. U prime is the derivative of what I have inside there, which would be that. And so that's in my numerator. And then I'm going to go to the square root of 1 minus whatever my u is. Well, it's square root of x quantity squared. Now I can clean this up a little bit. This is going to be 1 over 2 square root of x times 1 minus x. Well, I've got to put the square root there. x squared like so. And I think I did that wrong. Let me get rid of this. It's just a plain x, not square root. So this right here is my answer. So number nine, we're dealing with h of t, arc cosine. Well, arc cosine is just like arc sine, but we put a negative sign in there. So we go h prime of t is equal to, I'm going to put a negative one all over, square root of 1 minus ln t, that whole thing squared, and then don't forget to chain this off. So then i got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, of which is ln t, so here's my chain right there. And a quick refresher, this little 2 that's this exponent, could I pull it out in front and put it right there? The answer would be no, because this is the whole ln t that's being squared, so we just leave it as it is like that. This one, we'd go y prime, 1 over square root 1 minus this thing, quantity squared. Don't forget the chain. So we get that times 1 half. Now this one we can clean up probably a little bit more than what we did before, because we have kind of a compound fraction here. So if I do this, this is 1 over 2 square root of 1 minus x squared over 4. Common denominator. So I got a common denominator here, and then so I can take that square root of the 4 that I do have and take it outside. So this one is square root of 4. We do know that it is also named 2. So I get 2 over 2. So this is... 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. What's going to happen then is when we do antiderivatives, we might get something that's very clean like this, but then the antiderivative ends up with the x over 2. So we have to look at formulas for that in order to work backwards. A lot of these are just memorization and patterns, which are kind of good because there's tons and tons of antiderivatives and derivatives out there, so you just have to be able to look at a template and work it out. This stuff is kind of where we're at with some of those functions. Look at the template, figure it out. So then number 11 is, just as I was talking about, same exact problem. I don't see an x over 2, but when I do the integration, I do get this u over a. And notice we don't have a formula for the arc cosine because it just differs from the arc sine by a plus or minus sign similar to the arctan. These are the two main ones that you'll have when you do a antiderivative of an arc function or inverse trig function. So let's look at number 11 here now. If I see this pattern, it does look a lot like this one here. And there is no u substitution that I can do, so I have to do one of these formulas, which I have right here. So you identify what is a. a squared is right here, so this is a squared, so then this would be 2. Then I also need a u, u is equal to x, and so that's very clean for us. So we can just punch it into the formula and we're done. So this is going to be the arc sine of u over a, so it's x over 2, and then plus c. Done deal. 
So it's a lot finding, just using the formula and going on with that. So number 12, which pattern does this fall into? Well, it looks m very much like this one here. Now we've got to be careful because we do have some extra junk right here. And if we want to fit it exactly like the formula says, maybe we need to go 25 plus 4x squared. Just so you can see matching up the pieces. So when I identify these things, A is equal to 5 from right there. And then U is equal to 2x. Where did I get 2x? Well, it's u squared, so I get that. Now what I have to do, though, is I have to include a du. And my picture kind of messed up here, but I get 2 dx, like that. So I need to put a 2 in here. When I put a 2 in there, I need a 1 half out in front. And so I end up with 1 half... 1 over a, which would be my 1 over 5, arctan of u over a. So this is 2x all over my 5 plus c. So this is from my balancing the constant when I do my du. So if this value right here is anything different than x squared, you're going to be balancing some sort of constant. So I can put the 1 half and the 1 fifth together, you get 1 tenth, and that's my answer. Okay, let's look at number 13 now. 13, does this fall in that pattern? Yeah, this doesn't look like a U substitution, so this does look like the arc tan antiderivative. So A, ooh, it's square root of 3, and then U is equal to my 2x again. So then DU is equal to 2 dx, so I need a 2. Well, I already have one there. So I'm just going to have a 4 there left over. So instead of balancing 1 half 8, I'm just going to take this 4, put it out in front. So this will be 4, and then times 1 over A. And then I have my arctan of X over, I'm sorry, U over A plus C. So let's check out number 14 and tell me what that one looks like. Does that look like the arctan? Can I use the arctan formula here for this one down here? And I'm going to say no, because this one is just a straight U substitution. I have an X up in the numerator that causes me a little bit of problems. So I'm just going to say U is equal to 3 plus 4X squared. DU Oh, this is so easy. I don't even have to balance anything. So this is straightforward ln of 3 plus 4x squared plus c. Don't forget the absolute value, but if you notice inside, that's always positive, so I can call this this right here. All right? So don't get hooked into placing everything into arctan because sometimes you have stuff that isn't arctan anymore. So number 15, when you have the numerator and denominator same degree, then what we're going to probably have to do is long division. So these are all very similar functions, but we're going to have to do long division on this. So I did the long division, and so now I can rewrite this as two pieces. So this piece would be 2, and then I'm going to have minus 6, which was my remainder, all over the divisor, which is... 3 plus 4x squared dx. Now if you notice this, 2, that's very easy. So that would be 2x. That's my antiderivative. If you look up here, this is going to be back to my arctan. So then I get a is equal to square root of 3. And then I get that same exact thing with the 2x. So u is equal to 2x. du is equal to 2 dx. So I need a balance of 1 half, so it's going to be 1 half. I still have my 6, and then I still have my 1 over a. And then this is going to be arctan of my u over a plus c. 
So I did that kind of fast, but I have the six. That just goes along for the ride. I have the one half because I had to balance off this constant here, and then I have the one over a, which is the one over square root of three. So that's where all those pieces came from. Last one, number 16. What do you think we're gonna do here? Well, I can split this up into two pieces. So I can take the x and put it over this piece. And I can take the four, also put it over that. So now I have a couple different situations. Why don't you pause this one and try this. Both of these are similar, but they're, they're very different in how you approach them. Okay, on the left-hand side, we have this function right here. We gotta do a u substitution, so that's what I did. And then I get a negative two x here, so I need to balance off the negative two with the negative one half, and this is my final answer. Now on the right-hand side, this is the arc. What does that look like? Arc sine, sure. So this is just going to be equal to plus, this four just goes along for the ride, so I'm gonna pull it out in front, and then it's gonna be the integral of one over the square root of four minus x squared. I've already found my a and my u, and so then I'm going to end up with, I put the c there, I don't need that yet, but I'm gonna end up with the four times the arc sine of x over two plus c. That would be my full answer with both those pieces together there. I only need one C because you can just combine C's. All right, I hope you enjoyed all this. This is inverse trig, finding the derivatives and the antiderivatives as we go along. Thanks for listening, and you have a great day.